your mouth Straight up and down, yo, you know what I'm about You sound a little bit louder than you really are. Act as if we were all here tonight. Make some noise. All right, I'll, I'll believe that. I'll believe that. Ladies and gentlemen, superstar, wonder master, game master, Spencer Grinton. So stop running at your mouth. So, so stop running at your mouth. So, so stop I hope you paid your party. I already went to a gross place immediately. Episiotomy. For the folks at home, what's an episiotomy? I mean, gross. I know what one is. That's a, that's a world record for how gross it got. How like, like it was like right like right at the gross line, like coming off of the starting block. It's brave. My you, first step was gross. Yeah, but you know the deal. In order to freestyle, well, you got to be brave. Episiotomy was a brave jumping off point. Yeah. You know what? I, I do. I'm torn now. Okay. Like, I'm a little, sometimes I'm like, well, maybe not so much self, self-reflection. I watched my first uh, uh, AOC Instagram live. Okay. Have you seen her uh, do her Instagram streams? I haven't. I, I have followed AOC. She apparently just, like, I watched it and was like, it's genuinely inspiring. Yeah. Like, from an attitudinal standpoint, as from a performative standpoint, really doesn't matter what your politics are, like... I, 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 uh, for a politician to be like, I'm going to make a chicken dinner and talk uh, shop. And it wasn't like, it was, she wasn't like spending the whole time going like, I'm sorry, was that racist? Oh, I, I don't know. Was that, you know I'm like, it's she, refreshing. She was just sort of like, and you better <laughs> believe she gets more trolls than I've ever had. To, like, 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 she's like, 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 I was just like fat and watching. It's like everyone's taking the, the Hottest pot shots at her. Sorry if I hit you with a piece of popcorn. Um, I, I, see, she wouldn't say that. She'd be like, "I gotta get a new bowl for my chicken." Like she was just like, and that's that. And the, 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 that's how uh, uh, collective bargaining will work for healthcare. You know what? I need a mixing bowl. And wow. and and she just had this like kind of calm. I was like, I was watching it, and I'm like. She's not fucking around. Like, no. like she doesn't. She like, like well, she really does need that mixing bowl. She's not. <laughs> she's smart enough to know that she's not. If there's like eleven handlers off camera going like, no, 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 don't, not the mixing bowl. Oh, you know, like she'd have a million reasons to like tailspin. Yeah, but she's genuinely making like a family dinner and just propped her phone up and she's like, okay, what's the next question? And then there's a million dudes going like, how much for a blowjob? And she's just like, I need a mixing bowl. Yeah, it's fucking inspiring. It is. It is because you see that she really wants to do it. And she's you're, like, you're used she, to seeing politicians she, who don't want to do it. Yeah, to know that you're. I mean, what what have we associated politics with uh, throughout history? What is the problem with it? It's always that oh, the kinds of people that aspire to it are exactly the kind of people you don't want to give that job to. That's right, like, because they're pieces of shit. Right, and maybe she's maybe she's a piece of shit. We don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know that, that much about her. But I'm, I'll tell you what. She knows how to fucking Instagram live. Right. <laughs> So she's got that on me. Like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I was like, man, I'm inspired. She's like, 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 like the Joan of Arc of Instagram life. Yeah. I've been trying, I've been trying, I, I ask myself while I work out in my Instagram live feed, what would AOC do right now? And I just think, get a mixing bowl. Like, <laughs> I just try to get the, was that a fake laugh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I gotta do that these days. <laughs> <laughs> is it really that needed? No, no, it's a real laugh. How, 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 how are you, Spencer? Oh, I'm so good. I'm not. I'm not great. I'm fine. It's good. <laughs> All right, mixed signals. Uh, yeah, that's me, baby. You need a mixing bowl? I was gonna go there. Yeah, For those signals. Yeah, 
how do you think they got as such? No. Why don't you go there on uh, go there on one of them? Uh, I might. All right. On a, on my feelings. Yeah. Or my signals. Yeah. Just it, it, one bad thing, one good thing. Okay. Um. One bad thing. I hate myself. Okay. All right. We're gonna have to skip the next question. I lied. <laughs> no. One good. Th- one good thing. One good thing. Um. I don't know, man. Let's see. I guess it's not so mixed. How's it going with your? <laughs> just kind of a bowl of it's all in one. Yeah, it's all it's just one. Sorry again, here in the splash zone. Now that was a vodka to go with the popcorn flake that flew off earlier. <laughs> what are you writing down? Are you? Oh no, popcorn. Are you? She's sketching. She's sketching. Oh, you're just drawing. Oh, you're How drawing. dare oh, you? <laughs> it's the opposite of writing. It's fine. <laughs> Drawing can only ever be supportive. Like, like yeah, I, I, if you're writing, it's like it could go either way. Um, she made me look like Post Malone. <laughs> I don't want any of this to get out. I don't want anything to leave this room. Don't write anything yeah, down. This is between us. You, you, you could hand that to someone on a pony. It, it could be in Delaware by <laughs> Wednesday. And, uh, man, these hipsters, they real old style. Yeah, they, they live <laughs> they it They come to school. your show, they don't take pictures for Instagram, <laughs> they draw the shit. They ha- hand it to a red coat, right. and then they hand it to a Wright brother, and then there's a dirigible going to the Santa Barbara, you know, the next thing you know, <laughs> old Jed's a millionaire. Um, that's all, folks. Um, <laughs> I was uh, talking. I was talk. I was. I was realizing recently. I have some deep seated issues with my parents that I've been exploring. Oh, my nice. therapist says I should get a haircut. Right. Well, I. So I wanted to ask you about your therapist. Oh yeah. So well, you're don't still, let me so stop still, you. <laughs> th- for those of you who are new to the podcast, <laughs> Spencer's therapist is a bully. Oh yeah. <laughs> who oh, just man. wants him to cut his hair <laughs> because it's long. Is that still happening? No. Uh, I, I, I didn't see him for a month or longer because he had some stuff. I had some stuff, you know, he had a rope he had to climb. Right. He went to a therapist convention. (laughs) You don't want that to happen. I don't think I want a therapist to get conventing. Yeah. I always felt like I was, when I was going to a chiropractor, I was always like, and he would go like, oh, I can't do next week at the regular time. I'm going to a convention. I'd be like, oh, Great. Great. You're gonna be in you're gonna go to nine seminars about how to how to fucking tell me that my <laughs> foot limpness has to do with whether I should eat Cheetos. <laughs> fucking garbage. You're gonna like start making me fill out new Xerox forms that you got for free from some fucking He's dude g- in Hall H. Gonna be poking you with his other hand or something. But did your therapist come come back with a different attitude? Yeah, he was like, Your hair is great. Oh, this, no, 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 no. Oh, God damn it. You got uh, me excited because that's I'm what sorry. I was thinking is that he would go to a, he'd go to a convention. Maybe it's his first one in four years or something. And then he'd go to a seminar and be like, hey, stop telling your customers <laughs> to cut their hair. Yeah. That's like not cool. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. My friend has a therapist who uh, she says subscribes to that simulation theory of the world, which I, I don't know that there's a lot of religious beliefs I don't want a therapist to have, but it's all a simulation is probably, like, it's got to be one of the worst. It just seems really fucked up to me. Yeah. Like, oh, you know what you got to do? A cheat code. <laughs> <laughs> what? Just get into hacking. But, no. Uh, no, what have my therapist said? Uh, 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 I don't know. Uh, he... he <laughs> He he asked me about my social life a lot, which I think is because the first time I came in, I was like really depressed about a girl and um, I was just bummed out and it was bummed me out. And that's that's one of the reasons why I started seeing a therapist. And so since then, he's been asking me about my social life. But I always take that as like a transition into talking about my hair. (laughs) So I've been trying to like be like, oh, it's great. Oh, went to the beach. Oh, boy. (laughs) Which I don't think is a good use of therapy, you know. By the way, there's no guest tonight, so fuck off. <laughs> In a way, we're all the guests. I know Let's bring can... out Spencer's therapist. Ooh! God, that would be God amazing. Goddamn bully. We should book him. That would be cool. Well, I, I don't know. It would be hostile, but it would be interesting to just ask him questions when, like it was a real when, person. When he asks you about your social life, is he, what is he saying? Is he asking where you go? 
Is he trying to fucking hang? Or what, what, what is he? He's trying to hang. No, um, <laughs> I think that, I think he's just wanting to know, like, what I'm doing. Like, because I think Do you that... even have any friends? That's what it, it's, it's a picture of your therapist is like a bad guy from an 80s ski movie. <laughs> yeah. Do you even have any friends? Why don't you get a haircut? Yeah, man. Maybe you'd have more fun if you cut your fucking hair, bro. <laughs> Who do you know here? Who do you know at this therapist office? <laughs> My Who therapist you know? started asking me, me to house. shower more, uh, as I shared. But then also, like, which I have started doing because I have a pool now. So now I just shower more, and I have, a, have like a better shower. I have like one of those showers where you just like s- there's less difference between the shower and the bathroom. Mm. So it just feels more like you know, like a you fancy can walk hotel. Right in. Yeah, you walk in and yeah. you go, psh, and it goes, psh, and you go. Psh. <laughs> you start peeing. Yeah. Instead of like, oh, uh, uh, yeah. step over it. Something right. about that. You get in that tub, that poor people tub, and it's right. like, and the fucking shower head's just like, and you're like, hot, hot, and and instead of it's just like a big booth, and you just I can just stand behind the shower head and be like, Psh, and be like be as cold as you want, you fucking shit, fuck. <laughs> okay, and I'll right. talk to you when you're hot. And then I'm like, you're too hot. I'll talk to you when you're fucking uh, the temperature of my mom's womb. Uh, too soon? Too late? <laughs> too soon. Um, and then I'm just, so then I'm like, like, okay, I'll shower all the time. Big deal. Like, I always knew it was bullshit. So now, so now, so now I'm the cleanest nerd in the world. I guess I'm your worst nightmare. Whoa, whoa, whoa. can I be... Uh, can I be the president now? Uh, I'm so clean. <laughs> Smell my dick. Uh, 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 I mean, you can eat, eat off my armpit. You can make a wrap sandwich in my armpit. Uh, I'm so cool. Uh, man, I'm so cool. <laughs> um, but you, another you, thing my You took it too far when you said rap. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 another thing my therapist started saying, though, and this troubles me, is my therapist started saying at the end of the sessions, she now goes, so what do you want to do um, uh, uh, next week, two weeks? A suspect. Like, she's kind of like, I think you're done. Like, 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 why are you coming every week? You're boring. No. Like, we get it. You're rich. You're happy. Oh, good. Like, pfft. like what, do you, what, what do you just come here to fucking talk about some dude that got on your nerves on the freeway that's not why i get paid fuck off you fat jerk okay but again <laughs> i think uh that's awesome to graduate i know but it but feels then you also, also d- i feel terrified I yeah. feel, i'm like no mama i need to come back sure. every week i'm moving i and got all kinds of problems what if something doesn't spark joy <laughs> and that's true my yeah. shit's like i still have shit that maybe i haven't told you yet yeah yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, tr- I want to like beef it up, like <laughs> like uh, uh, the, at the end of a season of uh, of Law and Order, just like throw right. in. By right. the way, I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Jerry Orbach's got a problem. His daughter just, killed himself. I just want to turn to her and be like, "Okay, so now here's the real me." Yeah. After like four years of seeing that her. would be amazing at the end of it. Go, thank you so much. Yeah, I think I'll do two weeks from now. By the way, I have always been British. <laughs> You're a terrible therapist. <laughs> you did not pick up my accent. You never knew I wasn't British. How <laughs> <laughs> would a therapist react to that? <laughs> so they'd be like, oh, here's, can you get some money back? No, you're right. I'm not that good. I've been treating you as an American, which means that I don't know who you are. So like, that would be like finding a finding out the your doctor's stethoscope didn't work. I've been British the whole time, love. Governor. I'm not qualified to check your prostate. <laughs> <laughs> the entire time. Uh, all right, Uber. Uh, it updated its app, and uh, the 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 reckoning is upon us. There's now when you order a ride, a thing comes up, and it says uh, We're something still I've always dreamt you. of. It says it, say, it says like okay, and what's your conversation preference? You can you can say I want I want it quiet or I want it chatty. What? 
Yeah, it's a, like the two settings are like uh, uh, keep it quiet or I I don't mind a I don't mind a chat something like that. Which one are you? Uh, well, ninety percent of the time, quiet. But then, uh, but and I always wanted that. I've always said. I think a lot of people have always said. By the way, could you add a fucking button? You've yeah, said that. I was gonna say yeah. Like add a button that says, just to let you know before you even accept the fare. I'm not. I don't want to make a friend tonight. I don't want to hear about your podcast. I don't want to fucking like. I don't want you to question my fucking <laughs> left turns and right turns. I don't want you to. I could imagine for the ladies, maybe there's a whole thing there. It's like don't fucking talk to me. Right. And and, uh, and finally, now there's a button there. But now now I'm filled with anxiety because I'm always like, I hit that button and then I'm, I'm like I'm, I keep thinking, well, one of these days I'm gonna hit a. Oh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe I'll have like just taken an Adderall. An hour earlier, oh, shit. and I'm like, I'm just kind of like in a high mood, and I'm like, you know what? I don't, I don't mind having a little chitty chat, and like, like the tyranny of that now for the for a driver who would normally, like yeah. the Jason Statham transporter out there who's like, I have two rules, love. I don't, I don't. Oh, you don't bug me. I don't bug you. Uh, I'll, I'll just, just, I'll just pick up you, take you from them, and then they like get the fare, and they're like, it's like would pref- wouldn't mind a little chat, and I'm like, oh, right. Like you don't want to punish somebody, they're like like force somebody to like be just, driving. I'm like, how's the weather? And God damn yeah. it, fuck this. Yeah, or to be stuck with uh, the Sinbad of Uber drivers, who's like, oh my La Cienega jokes, <laughs> oh my San Vicente <laughs> jokes. Hey man, here we go by Pink's. You know, Pink's is a hot dog seller. <laughs> I don't want to be in the car with that dude. <laughs> yeah, I Coast. just they could have just been like uh, normal or just give me a fucking minute, you know, instead of like you gotta be talking, man, talk. <laughs> you better yes and me, dog. Because <laughs> it's not. I, I don't know who's <laughs> requesting chattiness. It just seems like you know. It's like I. Today, my mom died. I don't want to talk to anybody. That didn't happen to me. But it's like, that's the circumstance. No one's like, hmm, how am I feeling? Like, cordial? Well, the weird thing is the uh, air one, because it's like chat preferences, and there's probably like music preferences, and then there's one that's like air preferences, and the choices are hot. (laughs) Who's choosing hot? (laughs) Um, Warm. uh, Cool. Cold. And no preference, but like it, it kind of that's weird because it makes you, it forces someone who ordinarily, your default choice would be like, well, wait a minute, I want you to be accountable to the livability of the temperature of your right of your of your cabin, um, but that the only choice for a person that feels that way is no preference, which is a, it's a weird thing to say about your the temperature of a car you're getting to. No preference. Well, I do have a preference. I hope it's not cold. Right. I also hope it's not hot. There is no selection, in other words, that just says, uh, room temperature. Right. It's no preference, which to me is like, undecided. I'm the Ken Bone of temperature. (laughs) I don't know. I don't want to. I don't. I still haven't made up my mind. Like, give me what you got. (laughs) I'm adorable. I just I'm just here to feel things out. Like how how will I know if I'm not exposed to all the elements? Like and then they might feel like a need to like blast you with boy, what a shitty episode this is. <laughs> I mean that's really I think that's all I got, honestly. I don't even, I don't know what we're gonna do for it's the It's fucked of up the... that somebody uh could get in your car and be like, I'm hot and I told you to shut up. <laughs> this is uh, this is this is my checklist. It says quiet preferred button Uber an AOC chicken dinner. That's my <laughs> that's my those are my notes. I, I didn't I didn't guys I I thought that was two hours of oh well well we're freestyling now. All right, no net. Good. We don't need no fucking no net. no. Uh, How are you? How is your clothes? <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, they're lovely. <laughs> uh, what'd you do this weekend? <laughs> I, uh, I forced myself to go to my old house and grab some stuff that I felt like was worth bringing over to my new house. I'm like living in a big empty house. Cody and I are like, 
living in this unfurnished house, sleeping on a mattress on the floor, and it's kind of like we keep joking, like, "Oh, maybe we, maybe, maybe this is a new lifestyle, like no <laughs> furniture." There is a decorator that will eventually be furnishing the place, but in the meantime, we're kind of like, what are we supposed to... It's usually when you move, you're, you got a couch at your old place, you're going to bring it to your new place because, number one, usually your old place is not going to stay your place, and you all also don't want to buy a new couch, so I don't think I have to explain this to you guys. <laughs> What, but I have to explain it to you because you have to understand it's not the case with me. Like yeah. I, I'm keeping my old house, and I don't want any of the furniture in it at my new place because number one, I'm probably going to rent my old house. Right. So I'm not going to. I may not rent it unfurnished because you don't rent a house with no furniture. I don't think you can do both. It could do both. I lived in a rented house once that was unfurnished because it was like, oh, I'm going to rent this place uh, yearly. So there is that. But then there's also the more like the uh, kind of like upscale, like, hey, this is this place is ready to go. Leo DiCaprio's nephew who's in town for a year and who has money to burn and just like I, I don't know if there's there's like a market for that. Right. And that market may depend on, oh, just keep the furniture that's there. At any rate, I'm not going to throw the furniture in the garbage, right? But I'm not going to move it to the new place, and I'm not going to. And, it, and it's just like it's just like the house is just filled with shit. And we were talking about this last night. Like it's like you start to realize. Usually, it's forced upon you because you're you're move you got to get out of your old place. So that shit's you got to go through that shit anyway. But if you don't have to go through it, if it's just sitting there, you're kind of like. I, I, oh, you just start to realize your whole life represents decisions that you delayed. That's what your house yeah. is full of, is shit that you put off thinking about. That's what's on every shelf. It's like piles of paper that like may or may not be valuable. They weren't so obviously garbage that it was joyful to throw them away but they also definitely aren't like ooh, old man withers special paper that he gave me to oh i'm yeah. so close to my heart and it's like you're now like forced to i gotta either throw this shit out or i gotta bring it i gotta act like i'm proud of it and bring it over to my yeah. new place i don't want to do either and it kind of it makes me like wake up in an unfurnished house every morning and go, what should I do today? Uh, say on the weekend It's like, there could be a million answers to that. If you're just in the bustle of moving, but like you wake up and you go, shit, I don't have anything here. And you go, well, I got a bunch of shit at the old house. Should I go grab that computer? No, that computer sucks. Like <laughs> you're probably going to get a new computer. You don't want that old ass computer over here. And then you go, what, am I really gonna spend thirty thousand dollars on a new fucking Mac Pro, or am I gonna go PC, or am I gonna go like like because what I, I and then I'm like I don't want to think about that. I don't want to think about that. Right. And then I'm like, okay, fuck computers. And then you're like, what's left? Shirts. <laughs> Should I bring eleven thousand Rick and Morty shirts over here <laughs> that I? Don't wear because I don't want people to see me in public and think that's so sad. He wants us to ask about the show. <laughs> so I don't like I got, but I'm not throwing those away. What am I doing with those shirts? Neighbors. I have eleven thousand Rick and Morty shirts. What am I? Sp I can't throw them away. I don't want to be responsible for a bunch of homeless people going down. It's like. I don't want to be the new Britney Spears, where it's like, like all the homeless people are wearing Rick and Morty shirts. <laughs> The creator gave me this, man. <laughs> this, is, this was dumped off in a U-Haul at the Goodwill, and like everyone's just like, Pickle Rick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could actually undercut my own cottage industry by doing that here. I, 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 also, I, the I, irony, if you should ever become homeless... <laughs> and then I end up. I'm and like, then you're down there wearing a Rick and Morty shirt, and you're like, "Hey, same guy gave it to you, gave it to me." <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe you can have an estate sale and have people come over, buy the shit, lug it away, and wander the premises in your boxer shorts, crying about how this was your dad's house. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think you're on to something there, Brandon. It, it, is that all under the category of... That's what an estate sale is. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I could pretend I died and that I'm my own uncle or something yes. like that? Like, you can be... <laughs> You can be whoever you want. <laughs> you could be like, ah! I do want to become. I killed him. <laughs> like Marvin Gaye's dad. Right. right, right. <laughs> I can't. I'm. I'm out on bail. I shot my son. Would you like his bedspread? <laughs> I got. I gotta make bail. <laughs> Why are prices so low? Prices are so low because I got to make bail. <laughs> By the way, if you're listening and you're part of the Marvin Gaye family, I'm sorry. So sorry. That's I, I tell you, this is the new. I tell you, you can't you can't joke about anything. Like everyone's they a human counting, being now. They're counting that blurred lines money. <laughs> <laughs> oh. For the folks at home, what's the Marvin Gaye family doing? Well, I don't know what the Marvin Gaye family is doing, but you know, you, what have they done? You know, Marvin Marvin Gaye was a singer. Classic. Was he in the Commodores? What was he? No, no, he was his own thing. He was Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell. It was a Motown's, you know, uh, uh, staple until his, he shot his son. And his dad and shot. His dad him. Shot oh, him. Yeah. he was jealous. Jealous dad. His dad shot him because he stood up to his father. His father had been abusive to his mom. Sure. For years, then the Marvin fell on some hard times. Had to move back in with the parents. It was like. You can't keep talking to mom like that. Ugh, then especially went, now that I've been famous. That's fucking heartbreak. Yeah. yeah. Then was like laying down asleep, and his dad came in and was like, Mwah! and Ugh. shot him. You know, Man, see, family's the worst, right? Right. <laughs> Pro- probably not a controversial thing. opinion, but what a shitty dad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I don't want to go. I don't want to, you know, play the devil's advocate here, but. I'm on his side. <laughs> but sometimes kids can be a drag. Is that what you're going to say? Sometimes you want to you wanna be mean to your wife. Yeah. You can't have people telling you not to do that. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I what are you supposed to do? World, Listen uh, to them? <laughs> you're a product of the twisted relationship between me and your mother. How dare you condemn it? <laughs> right. That's almost like saying I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> Just want to say shout out to all those dudes who punch their dads in the face for some shit like that. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hope you don't get shot. <laughs> right. I wonder what the statistics are. Is there a word for, uh, is there a side, uh, you know, C-I-D-E prefix for, you know, we, we, we have patricide, matricide, we have infanticide. Uh, Fratricide. What, 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 is, there a, is there a side prefix there for killing your offspring? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you say insecticide, uh, I'm going to come I'm, out there. I'm, you're, you're like an evil villain with a bow tie. I'm the word miser. <laughs> Are you looking for something? <laughs> I've got it. I will not explain. <laughs> I'll merely acknowledge its existence. <laughs> you have 20 questions. <laughs> Do you know the word? No. You're just you're just you're just voting confidence in the English language. You're like, look, I know old lady English has got it. It's the same prefix that you use when you give a job to your son. He's a Riddler. <laughs> it's a different guy, but there, our audience is just. I mean, you got to make your own fun in this episode. I agree. Like, don't rush anything. I I am on your side. It's the same prefix when you nepicide. give... Oh, nepa, nepicide. I love Which is also... <laughs> <laughs> which is all, the Wikipedia this says filicide. What's that? F-I-L-I-side. Filicide. Mm, oh, Some, oh, this oh, motherfucker! Oh. <laughs> nepicide. We it's, know what that really means. It's the next episode. Nepicide. <laughs> it's also possible it could be both, right? Like, I mean, yeah, yeah. Like, there's plenty of words. I but mean, he had arrogance that made it sound like it could only be one, and that was a mistake aside. <laughs> <laughs> so hack. <laughs> why is it? Speaking of language evolving, um, why this do you think quotes? it is that I will never use an emoji? Um, but I will constantly use animated GIFs. Like, like, what is that about me? 
Do you use emoticons? Or have you? No, I won't use emoticons. When I was growing up, that emoticons were the beginning of it was sure. like people using colon and a and a parenthesis to indicate a smile Happiness. or a frown. We were like the 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 purists among us for like that was like how dare you? Like if you can't communicate your state or your position or whether I should take you seriously without like re- reverting <laughs> to the ape-like behavior that chased us here to this haven. Um, like, why are you bringing that here? It was like, people would do ASCII roses in chat rooms, you know, here's a rose. Or, Classic. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, you know, the heroes among us hated those people. Heroes. Uh, and then the emoji came along and was like, oh yeah, why do, a, why do emoticons when you can do an emoji? And I, I can't, I won't touch it, I won't do it, I also won't type LOL. I'll only type ha ha. I don't understand what my definition of, of those boundaries are. And I especially don't understand why. I think animated GIFs are the fucking greatest things on sliced bread. Yeah. I think that's amazing that I don't care how hack it is, whether it's ironic or sincere, like I'll 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 like I'll just throw you an image of Jim Carrey going, I, I, I likey, likey, like whatever. Like, I don't care. I, I don't, I don't suffer a moment of indecision about it. I don't think I'm They're selling genius. out. I it's like 50 cent, like, like fucking like smiling and then driving away and then birds <laughs> in the backseat. I don't, I love it all. Yeah, they're genius because they're little mini movies that you can throw at somebody. So why is that? Why does that meet my definition of classy or like what hip or what is? It's a, it's a chance at sarcasm like never before. I don't know. I said like like is it is it is it because emo, if you if you send an emoji, what you're doing is um is your uh is it is it about inductive versus deductive like a kind of like the shape of the telescope like you're looking through which end like you, if I send Oprah if you say something to me and I send you an image of Oprah going <laughs> like <laughs> it's more up to you what that means and that therefore I'm like I'm not. I'm kind of like being more creative by choosing that Oprah picture. Well, I think that memes are, I mean, gifts are basically just memes. So it's essentially like responding with like a canned joke. Like that's what she said. You know, it's like you're being clever using cultural context. You're kind of hacking more than you are participating. Right. Whereas emojis are just simply like, you're just crudely depicting certain concepts using images instead of words when you could easily use words. So it's essentially language. Whereas a, a, a gif is more of like a, it's it's, yeah. your, it's more of like a joke or something. But I think easily that's a, just a matter of. I mean, you're. I appreciate you saying that, but you probably know that that's totally a subjective thing. And that any oh, any shit. number of these kids would be like, that's exactly what I do when I send an eggplant emoji or a right. or even a smiling emoji. But they're using those characters, like they're they're creating a language using these new symbols. They're essentially new letters. But, you know, that's like creating their own meaning. And so you could like do the jack off thing and that's maybe a step removed. But that's different than like the sweating in the hand, which are just letters, you know. Whereas I think you're communicating the full idea when you share a meme or a GIF. It's like, yeah, it's, again, more like a joke. And it is, is almost like, uh, it's almost like albums to DJs. So like certain people have incredible collections of GIFs and, right. like, and memes. So if you're like, <laughs> if you're. Pet, if you're petty like myself, and you're online and you're you're flaming and you're going back and forth with somebody, if they have like a, just a fucking Pokemon ball size or collection, I don't play Pokemon because I met girls. And oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> That shit was half laugh and half balled up fists, and I respect you all for that. <laughs> um, but. Some people have like an arsenal of just like images to throw at you. And and also, okay, so maybe this is what's key about it is that with the emoji library that you're choosing from, you're not choosing from a circulated cabin right. of air. Uh, there's a cultural uh, uh, tint to uh, an animated GIF library, even if, because I'm not going to lie, I don't. I don't curate a fucking folder of awesome gifts and make them and stuff. 
but people do, and because people do, it's kind of a little closer to sending a piece of wall graffiti that because there's a culture out there of people who are continuously updating and circulating images, pulling yeah. them from TV shows and things. And you, if you're drawing from that pile, you're at least drawing from uh, something more vibrant than the idea of Pepsi saying to you, here's the 109 images to choose from uh, this fiscal quarter. Here's how here's how you say I'm going swimming. It's a drawing of a guy going swimming. But yeah. over here, it's like, like here's the latest in in. But 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 where it fails is where it's like you, people can use gifts to be just as banal and hor- horrendously and enforcing sucks. of like horrible yeah. toxic culture. Like I I remember when, when when Megan Gans was like 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 reaching out to me on Twitter and going like you hurt me or whatever and like the the people that were like all the popcorn gifts of people eating popcorn and then yeah. other people going like you're gross like like that's this is a gross time for that what the fuck what um I'm, I'm eating popcorn right and it, but, but it was like that is like the same sickening thing that emojis do it reduces us to uh, yeah. uh, uh keys on a keyboard and but the the healthy idea of it is uh what did you just say? And then you like you you just you're pulling. You can you can type words into the little Giphy engine, but it's still like okay. Here's Steve Carell like getting a pie <laughs> in his face or something. But I, what's <laughs> cool about the like gifs and memes is that like you have to pick it yourself, which means you have to like know it exists. Like these days, you can search for like keywords or whatever and get one. But like it's an artistic decision to pick one that you think fits best and that's also very much like memeing where it's like there's a bunch of different things that are kind of this basic joke but you pick this one because it's the most applicable yeah whereas because i'll type like I'll, I'll type like i went there right into giphy and then it'll come up yeah and that's how i discovered that 50 cent like <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's he's not saying i went there as he's driving away but it's like that's what comes up when you type i went there or whatever, and then I like, and then Cody and I discovered that, and then we have a relationship with that gift. Like yeah, we right. we yeah. keep on sending fifty cent to each other, like driving. And it's like an old meme, and you can look up the origin of it, and like all the then people add like Bert in the back seat as he's driving away and stuff. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think emoji has that. I think you can kind of get there, but it's just at the end of the day, it's just like this means man, this means hand, this means dollar bills, you know. And, and, th- so and you, this means I'm talking to you like this. So like it's all, it's all the most obnoxious who, shit. The who worst, has ever done that? The worst is the fucking crying thing. It's like it's like I just oh yeah the crying laughing. It just makes me so fucking mad that it's it, 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 it's it's like taking the LOL phenomenon, which is it's like 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 people just type LOL or R O F L or L L M A O. Like it's just it's just such a nervous twitch that everyone wants everyone to know they're laughing at them condescendingly. It's so fucking toxic. I fucking hate it. Like, like if you're going to condescend to someone, you should know how to condescend, not tell them you're condescending. It's yeah. fucking horseshit that you can raise a flag while you're talking going, by the way, I'm condescending to you. No, you're not allowed to. You don't have the words. Yeah. It, it does kind of feel like LOL would be like executed like LOL. It's a, it's a, it's like holding it up a, a photo like, of Frasier like while you're yeah. talking going by the way I'm yeah. super smart. Right. <laughs> and from Seattle. No you're not. Put that down. That would be cool. I, I uh, like like you're not allowed to do to that. that. That's that, I guess yeah. that's that's one of the biggest it's like it's like fucking like that I guess that's me like really shaking my cane. It was like in my day you could really you had to be a genuinely condescending person. <laughs> It would have to be in your fucking veins. You couldn't just like go get your mail and be like, oh, I wish I was one of those condescending types. And then and then just be like, oh, these letters are them condescending. And like, you're not, no, you're not. You're a sincere hillbilly. You're not yeah. condescending at all. You're an idiot. Yeah. You can't condescend to anything, but maybe like a termite that's eating your garage. Like you could be like, I'm going to get you. L-M-A-O. It's because uh, it's there's a printing press now. So yeah, we, we get to hear I mean, these are the everybody. frustrations. That's the thing that's making me realize. I'm like, I'm only, I'm only uh, expressing the frustrations that the the fucking status quo expressed to Gutenberg yeah. when he printed Police Academy. Whoa. <laughs> um, 
when, 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 yeah, when the when the when when Martin Luther was like, I I, I have a dream that Bibles should be in German instead of Latin. <laughs> um, I don't think these. I don't know if these uh, hilarious uh, historical mix 'em ups are. <laughs> I don't know if they're la- they're, they're not landing because you don't get them. You're just sort of like, why are you doing that? <laughs> what are these? Is this like fractured flickers? <laughs> like, are you doing like a 1950s comedian? Are you going to do Sniglet. spoonerism? Ne- spoonerisms next? Uh, Fender Sella. Uh, uh, okay. Well, what Cinder- are we looking at? I already oh, did Cinder it. Fella. There were like there were like stand-ups that would have a whole spoonerism what? act. They would go. Finder Sella was a was a, a sin press. I, I, I don't. So, they would yeah, mix the words up. Do no, I know what spoonerisms are. There, you you flip the first word of two yeah. words or the first letter, but then then you have to know that's that's Cinder Fella, and then you have to care about that. And I'm like, ugh. I, I, I saw I saw a dude in Milwaukee who was like an old timer, and he did a whole stand up act. He said, "Do you guys know where spoonerisms are?" And the <laughs> and I was at, I was at like a Def Jam show, like where Shrab and I were like went there on a dare to each other, we're like we're gonna do the Def Jam open mic, and we both this went. This is awesome. And um, and at the time it was like it was like a new concept, the Def Jam thing, and Shrab and I were very young. And I I I, I went out and was like, hey, yeah, I just played to my whiteness, and like the the Milwaukee black crowd was like totally respectful and supportive because I was like, I was totally cheap and was like, look at me, I'm the white guy. But there there was like uh, there was like the, I remember there was this old guy that came out and was like just he had no it was like he didn't know from. He didn't. It, there was. It was like Def Jam. I don't. It doesn't. He just came out and did this crazy like Catskills act, and he was like, you, uh, "Have you folks heard of spoonerisms?" And and everyone, I, no, I, what is happening? And he was like, a "Spoonerism was what?" And he explained what a spoonerism was, and then he was like, "And I have a spoonerism story." And then he told the story of Findersella and her uh, plep. Pisters, whatever. I can't do it. It's just like he just went through the story yeah. of Cinderella, but like mixing the letters up. And she was Cinderfella. Yeah. For how some did reason. it? Uh, how oh, did, how did it go over? It was. It was. It was so weird. It was just. <laughs> it was just like he, he, it, it, people weren't heckling because it's Milwaukee, and they were like they were polite and like like it, it was like a working class crowd that was just like. Who is this old dude? Like, why is he doing this? What is he doing? I don't understand what's <laughs> is happening. He is he having this? a stroke? Like, what? What? Why is he doing this? Like, what? What is is Finder Sella gonna eat some pussy? Like, 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 like I, I, I it's, so they, it's they Def Jam it. night at an already shitty comedy club. Like, what are we? Ha- what are we doing here? <laughs> why are we here? How great! It, 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 if and, that had happened, and the guy just finished. Okay, so <laughs> now, yeah, I think they were waiting. They were, they were like, I don't want to be like set up. Like in the middle, he goes like, and then he ate some pussy and does a backflip and like starts playing the violin with his balls and like everyone's like, see, I was on his side from the beginning. <laughs> But he just finished up, and it was like, and then he got in a hearse and <laughs> drove into a pit. The weird thing is we had never, it was Milwaukee, so you think you know everybody, and then this guy just came out of nowhere. I think he might have been a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I think his, his hair might have been snakes. Or like, You go to his agent and go, hey, what was with that guy? Did you book him in the wrong room? That guy died 30 years ago. <laughs> If you listen closely, you can still hear his act in all black rooms. <laughs> Why is that ghost up here again? Why did he do that? Is <laughs> not the response you want from an audience. <laughs> I'm just still stuck on this Fender Sella because I realize that the reason it's Fender Sella is because you have to put the F in there, otherwise there's nothing to spoonerize because it would just be Indersella, which is just nothing. Like that's spoonerizing with a, a non-present letter. Yeah, I I don't know what to do with the old cube. Uh, <laughs> what was wrong with the old cube? It's, it was small. Okay. <laughs> I don't like the reaction that got. I, I, <laughs> It made me feel insecure. <laughs> well, I think it's a just don't. You're not going to drink out of this. You're not going to. No, no. I meant that you saying it was too small really oh. titillated people. <laughs> well, they they were because they were watching my. They were watching me the whole time. They're like, the he's like a process. dumb monkey. Like, like, 
uh, how and what, what have you managed to get to the new place and, and why? <laughs> like, what did you need that you were like, I got to stop fucking around. I need knives. I mean, can I tell one more story from that stand-up of club? We'll get Because I just remember, like, there's so, I have so much sense memory of that, that particular club. I can't remember its <laughs> name, but it had the Def Jam night, and then it also would have, like, a regular comedy night, like, I, ostensibly for white people. I don't know. But, like, it's, it's like it was a different, it was like, hey, anyone, please come. Um, and I remember there was this magician, and uh, he, <laughs> he came there early, and I was like, I'm going to do my shitty stand-up act. And this magician who just like he was one of two magicians in Milwaukee and he was a constant presence at every every open mic and he <laughs> this whole thing set up and he's like Dan uh thing I'm glad you're here uh sit, sit sitting back but uh right in the middle right in the middle and it was like this empty house and I sat in back and then he's like he played this like Susie and the Banshees song. I was like, kiss them for me. And he made this like handkerchief dance and go in a aquarium. And then it came out of the aquarium and, and, and he, he finished, he did the whole, he did this three minute thing where he made this handkerchief dance. And, and I was like really entertained by it. Cause it's like, geez, the energy put into this guy, like pulling these strings with his hands on his, that are attached to his rings. And he's like making this handkerchief dance. It was like, that's impressive. And, and, and it was like, I was like, yeah, it was, it's really cool. It's cool. Like, 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 like that, that must have taken a lot of uh, work. And, and he's like, yeah, yeah, I, I did. And I was like, I, 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 it, 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 it. I, I don't know what I said where I was like, I didn't mean to, because I didn't realize, I, 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 can't, I, I didn't know that you weren't supposed to see the strings. Like, like because that was the reason why he was making me sit somewhere. And he's like, just watch this, just watch this. And then I was like, like that's cool. Like the so the strings are just on your rings or whatever. And he was like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Ah! He fucking. I have never seen a human being like like. He was like, ah! Ah! fuck. Because he had asked me to sit like, like that chair. The no, that chair. Spot. No, right to your left. Holy it was like, shit. So he must have been like, at least that person won't see them. Or was it like, that's the one chair left? Like, had he had, had he been there all night? And had he had like his girlfriend sit in every chair? I, I just accidentally triggered a fucking meltdown. That's, yeah. But it was crazy because I was impressed. I was like, well, that's fun. Like, like a uh, hanky on some strings tied to your rings and they're like pulleys everywhere. And it was like, like, that's fun. Oh, it's fun. I, I, I like, like, it doesn't, I, I, I don't have to believe Holy that there's shit. an angel helping you. Like, that's silly. <laughs> like, I, I know that there's no ghosts happening You're, you literally were like are those bunnies going to be safe in that box <laughs> <laughs> i really was not trying to be a dick i swear no not at all because right. you you were in love with the actual ballet of the whole situation because you people didn't know were people dicks. weren't supposed to see that shit they, back then it was like there was like a serious fucking turf war like people the, the stakes were high before karaoke wiped us all out um uh the the magicians boy, and puppets boy were people proud of their craft and i i remember a, fr a friend of mine and everybody smoked back then and like i've told this story before but it was just like 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 scenes from the class struggle in open mic comedy in milwaukee in 1989 um like it, it there was a comic who uh, he was a magician, sorry. Uh, that's the whole point of the story. Uh, ooh, never the twain shall meet. Um, he, he, somebody had broken into the safe house in Milwaukee and um, in, in, in this place, like there was this door that you could just kick in from the sidewalk. What's and it the happened safe to be, house? The safe house is like a tourist trap in Milwaukee, which just sounds like such an oxymoron. <laughs> like, oh, it's one of those Milwaukee tourist traps, huh? <laughs> hey, you're in Milwaukee, you'll pay anything. <laughs> God knows you won't take your business to Chicago. <laughs> but it was just sort of like, it was like this spy themed bar okay. with, had, that had a secret entrance. Okay. Um, and it, it had an open mic where you were, you would perform for like up to five Austin businessmen who were sleeping off a uh, uh, red eye. Um, you would just like practice dying in this place. Jesus. And, uh, but, and, and, and one of the, one of the magicians that <laughs> stored their stuff Got, somebody somebody kicked in a door and the closest thing to the door was like a trunk full of magic shit and they took it. 
And I came to the open mic night that night, and, and that 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 magician was just like crying, and yeah. was like like, no, what the fuck. It fucking took all my shit. It was fucking it was like five thousand dollars worth of yeah. shit. Like all these tri- like 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 genuinely had a had a, a bunch. Of, and I I just remember like my friend and mentor, like a a young comic, but still way older than me because I was like seventeen and like he's got a, a camel light dangling from his lips and he's like you can still smoke indoors and he's just like oh no, oh god that's so. That's a fucking bummer. That's a bummer, man. A bummer. And then he, the guy, goes running off to like fret and like talk to police or file his report about his magic trunk. And then he just turns to me and goes like, "That's what you get for being a fucking prop comic." <gasps> <gasps> and it was just said with no fucking humor, nothing. It was just like, like, yeah, you fucking Hispanic. You know, it was just yeah, like this yeah. ra- race war between performers, yeah. like the fucking jet. Like, 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 you know, here's the thing, like, here's the thing, puppets, props, all that shit, big time war, gangs, not a lot of places to perform, don't want to follow a dude with a prop, but at the same time, sometimes good, Willie Tyler Lester, people, people, puppets, not so bad, puppet musicals, all sorts of shit, Henson, great, but here's the thing. Honor among comics. We don't oh. shit on each other. We but don't the shit ca- on each- yeah, the comics. Like if I were, think you, yeah. you're crazy because you have a credit card machine attached to your fucking briefcase and that's a great bit for you, I'm not mad at you for that shit. I'm just thankful I don't have to carry that shit around. It was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy how mad we'd get about yeah. about people who had like the same shtick or they had like. But they would kill. Yeah, it was like it's because they would kill. Yeah, and it was like, oh, that doesn't deserve to kill. That's a bunch of bullshit. It's like, what what are we striving for here? We want to earn our keep because we want to suffer. Like, what did we? We we worship Bill Hicks, you know. Right. Everybody wanted to be Bill Hicks. Everybody wanted to be the truth bringer, the light giver, the the that perfect blend between like you've got a strong forty five, but you you're also like so fucking filled with rage. But it's like. Not everybody's filled with rage. Like that yeah. was the fucked up thing is everybody wanted to be angry and everybody wanted to kill and like not die and yeah, it was very There was a there there was a, everybody wanted to be Bill Hicks and a lot of people would have been better Stephen Wrights. Yeah, <laughs> like a lot of people were like cornball cutes and yeah. funny and we would we would we would ridicule them. Yeah. Because if they, if they were too cutesy or something if they were too PG, yeah. people that didn't work blue, sometimes yeah. you'd respect them but but they'd have to fucking murder in order for you to respect them if they don't work blue. Because it's like, what are you trying to say? You do, you're not you're not allowed to say fuck. You're in a fucking bar. Like 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 just like the crazy factionalism is so entertaining to me now looking it's, back. It's, but what's really funny about it is like we the presupposition was that one tribe was going to win out. And what's funny is that they like I was there for the karaoke machines being rolled in one by one. <laughs> and it was like it used to be comedy versus darts. It was like it was yeah. like like my friend Sean McKenna at the at the LA Freeway which was a Milwaukee like bar that had, where I did my first open mic. He was like he would he would say Hey, it's open mic night, folks, uh, and you know that because you can't play darts. And then I was like, <laughs> like, it was true. It was like that was the big problem with it. It was like, well, there's a microphone in front of the dartboard. So, and and then, but then five years later, it was like there are just these dudes with mustaches, like un- rolling in with these dollies of weird sci-fi equipment. And I was like, what is that? It's karaoke. What does yeah. that mean? Yeah. Karaoke? Yeah. It's a Japanese thing where you sing other people's songs. And it was like, the fuck is this? A year later, done. Yeah. Everyone get. Yeah. Why, why would the Holiday Inn next to the airport ever want a fucking alcoholic slob to berate the people waiting in the lobby if they can replace them for 20% right. less with a fucking music machine that yeah. lets them sing I Will Survive. Like, like, we'll make them come in by the droves. It was just like this crazy Boogie Nights thing of like, oh, you've been replaced with joy. You've been, re- <laughs> all of your conversations about what's hack, of like, oh, that guy's act is hack because he's, he, he's above the belt. He doesn't work blue. He's too blue. Oh, he's he's ripping off Andrew Dice Clay. He's ripping off uh, uh, Kevin uh, uh, Durant. Uh, Sarbo. Durant. <laughs> 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 Kevin, Kevin Sarbo. I like all Durant. that Hercules stuff. Thanks. 
Yes. <laughs> uh, that would and, be and, and then just all wiped out, wiped out yeah. by this other thing that we never had a chance to factionalize. We yeah. never were like, oh, singing people. <laughs> we were all extinct like that. It was, it was funny. All right. Anyways, you were asking me a, a provocative question about uh, moving. About what it takes to make the list to be transferred. Yeah, I don't know. I and mean, that's, the, that's the weird Zen tailspin I'm in. I wake up in the morning and I go, I need shit in this house. And then I'm like, what shit are you going to put in this house? And then I'm like, I don't know, a microphone? Because I'm good. Yeah. Like, but I'm like... <laughs> Do you talk to your therapist about this? <laughs> I haven't really yet. I, I That could be fun. <laughs> Might get you a couple more weeks. She'll be she like, yeah, say, take your microphone. <laughs> She she would just say, "Oh, that's well, that's where you're at, you know. Like I think that's really profound. Like that's where I'm you're at. Need a you're more. changing. You're changing. <laughs> you know, she's really into it. Like, but we 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 have a shorthand. Like, shit, we go like, oh, that's not who Dan Heller is. Like, because I'm like, like, like whether I would literally take Cody's name or not. I like the idea that I'm Dan Heller now. Yeah. Or like I'm not Dan Heller yet because I like I keep fucking up. Like, I, but I, I I like to think in my head like I'm turning into a different." guy yeah in my sure. older age joseph campbell talks about that like in like tribal cultures there's like you know old men they they get reborn they change the way they dress at a certain age and they go from being like they'll actually change their identity yeah they'll be like oh i was i was fucking kicking bird but now i'm like <laughs> screaming screaming uh stereotype <laughs> 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 Screaming stereotype, give me your wisdom. Well, I, I, I don't have that much. I'm just, a, I'm just an iCloud of tropes that Dan Armin got from five movies. <laughs> I thought it would be uh, uh, eat, eat laxatives and get off my lawn! <laughs> But that is the thing, like, th I mean, that, like, 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 Western culture, you go, like, what, that's what we totally deny ourselves. We deny ourselves the right, I was, I was on Duncan Trussell's podcast recently, and we talked a lot about the right to change your mind, how we punish it, how, uh, yeah, it's like, that is true. Like, that's like, like, true. like, like, we especially, like, like, we definitely do not want, and it, 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 it it's something that, that, that occurred to me is that, like, all the endless, debate and investigation that we commit to the idea of nature versus nurture which is totally valid like let's of course that's a totally like that's of academic interest nature or nurture did your mom's genes make you a serial killer or was it the thing your mom made you eat um but Either way, it was your mama. God exactly. Damn. Either way, it wasn't you. <laughs> Either way, it wasn't you. And that's the thing that we... It's, it's profound how much we debate about nature versus nurture, but yeah. we don't debate about will versus free will that much. You have to like sign up for a weird, unmarketable uh, college class in order to have these conversations about, are we choosing anything ever? Or are we just products of a bunch of fucking shit that's either nature and or nurture? Uh, do, but do we, do we actually like... See, I fucks with that argument constantly. The do we choose, can we move, can we make our own way sort of thing. And it is weird, because to a certain degree, we do sort of choose, is my, is my thought. I side with that, because the alternative yeah. is going insane. Like, yeah. you, you're just like a choo-choo train going around a Christmas tree called God's Board. Yeah. <laughs> For like, no reason. And you're just and like, oh, it's, if I feel like I'm choosing whole wheat over rye. And God's like, nope, that's your fucking dopamine, you idiot. You fucking little clockwork man. Yeah. <laughs> Way to choose wheat this time, you fucking matchbox car. Also, so boring to watch us if we were constantly making the wrong choices. Like, you'd be just watching a tragedy day after day. So in order for it to be a sitcom and fun to watch... There's a little bit of free will that goes on, but there's a certain amount of fucking up that also is part of it. I like this idea that there's free will is an illusion and God is watching that. <laughs> <laughs> He's the, because the trick's like, on him. Why then. did I do this? <laughs> this is a But that is like an old man watching a model train. Like like you yeah. you set up a model train set and then you watch it go around and do exactly what you anticipated it would do. And if it fucks up, you fix it. Like yeah. it's, if if, it, if the train makes its own decision, you call that my I fucked up making my model train. 
My understanding <laughs> was I read in the past that uh, science scientists generally have formed the consensus that free will is an illusion. But if you think about that, it doesn't help. So for all intents and purposes, <laughs> it's not. But but scientifically, it is. Which means that um, like I think that means that astrology is real, right? <laughs> I mean, it's the equivalent for sure. Yeah, because like, like I was just may, born like this. Yeah, so oh, so I'm just a guy who was born in this house on this date, and then my mom did this, and then my dad did this, and then the school I went to, this happened, and licorice was in season, and right, and so here I am doing this podcast, saying these words that I'm about to say. There they go. There go those words that I was already about to say. Ooh, boo, boo, boo. That's so. I mean, I guess that's what Westworld was about. Maybe that was a hilarious. good season. <laughs> I thought it was a bag of shit. Yeah, maybe it was profound. Oh, I just got it. The piano roll. Oh, shit. Was that your ring? Yeah. Dan's ring flew off for the folks at home. Who applauded my We're, ring flying yeah. off? Fucking incels. <laughs> <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> Finding love is the worst thing that ever happened to you. You think that magician, like, that's always how he reacts to people getting his <laughs> illusions? It's, so funny. it's like, yeah, you just put that Words. card there. Fuck! Ah! Ah! <laughs> that's he like was, a, uh, it's a bad temperament for a magician, I think. Well, it's a bad temperament, really. I saw the inside of his apartment once. Oh, and no. What? And I will never trust magicians. <laughs> Again, I was like, whoa, there's the trick. Yeah. <laughs> what is yeah. you being out in society yeah. is the prestige. <laughs> like, this is uh, was it a, a mess? temple to self abuse. Yeah. And also, you have a live in girlfriend who, of course, is your assistant. And, like, like, <laughs> and, and if she stops being your assistant, there will be a new girlfriend and she will be your assistant because the other one is scared. And like, like, uh, because because she, unlike these dying doves um, in this cage, who are just wondering, am I next for the sleeve? <laughs> like, if there, there could be a Pixar movie that's like yellow feathered doves, like in this lightless apartment, going like, dude, you're going in the sleeve next. You hear that phone call? That was his manager. You're going to Toronto. You're going in the sleeve. God damn. You're going in the fucking dove holster. <laughs> you, you're not going to make it. <laughs> Holy shit. That's, the uh, the uh, blackness, the dark yeah, fucking hole. Of course. It was like of just, course. oh, because I think when you're a magician, you do have license to justify your apartment being caked in debris. You can go, well, that's a bunch of magic newspaper. <laughs> I can't throw that away. I might have to pour milk. I might milk. need that to pour right. the milk. <laughs> 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 oh, man. That's awesome. Which is chunky as fuck. <laughs> In that broken refrigerator. God damn. No, not a magician. An open mic magician. God damn. That's dark as yeah, fuck. Yeah, I mean, but have you... Uh, I That's mean, like okay for the clan to hate darkness. Have, <laughs> Which have, only happens if you're really dark, right? Yeah, yeah. Justifiable. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so just to understand, I'm not trying to, to gotcha journalism, but I understood that your apartment was pretty messy. So how did this make an impact on you? I think well, that, animals obviously is a huge step. No, but, you're right. You're absolutely right. I mean, I ended up living in just as much filth as a magician. Oh, but you. So at the time you made that judgment, you had a better place. I had the privilege of being a college okay. dropout who was like basically still living. With, I, I was just living like a college kid. Like I was. Sure, yeah. I was going from a dorm room <laughs> to like, oh hey, can I crash in your attic? And so I didn't have enough stuff to be filthy. Right. I, I would definitely graduate to that very quickly. You're absolutely right. I, gotcha. I, I yeah. said it wasn't 
a gotcha. It was. No, I'm kidding. Sorry. I just wanted to, because I don't know. It sounded like, obviously like an, sad animals and then the mess they make is definitely like a, a level above, but I was just trying to understand because it sounded like it wasn't necessarily the level of mess, but then you were saying stuff that indicated it might have been. Anyway. Yeah. What's up? Uh, how do you like uh, hold, 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 hold. Buffalo? Why did you go over wings? there? Yes. What What made you? I was just a because kid. You knew I was like I was like Bob Dylan. I was trying to learn about. I was. I would. I don't know. I would pick somebody up, drive them to a gig. I. 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 I can't remember You're honestly. Being nice. I would like. I. I was like. I'm focusing on my comedy, so I'm like in it to win it. Like yeah, I don't know, I, I was it. in the biz, and I, I just wondered. I can't. I, I yeah. Maybe I would pick. Maybe I was picking him up. Maybe I. Maybe my car was working and his wasn't. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Maybe we were gonna write a script together. I have no idea. I can't remember. But it is. Yeah, it is. But I mean, yeah. In terms of overall filth, it, not as meaningful as much as like these guys. They perform in these fancy costumes mm-hmm. and they have names like the Great Xander and like <laughs> <laughs> to a man they do not. It's like 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 don't live in like a yeah. loft that's like immaculate and there's like a, oh my illusion chest it's like right. no it's just a fucking filth nest like because yeah. because how else are you going to learn to roll quarters on your knuckles it's not by cleaning up <laughs> You have to sit and like eat string cheese and like let the wrapper fall out of your mouth. Uh, like no. you know, if you want to get the jump on the other magicians that are like practicing just as much quarter rolling on the knuckles, you have to sit there and fucking like flip cards over and over again. You're going to watch Columbo and collect mucus. No, these tricks, you can learn these tricks. <laughs> You don't need to like suffer. For you have the... to practice that shit. I mean, no, practice. Like, it's manual. But it's dexterity. not like a gymnast house has diarrhea all up in it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you don't know any good gymnasts. A, 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 a gymnast house has fucking emotional trauma all over it because they're sure. eleven years old and they've been sure. their souls been shattered because they have no agency. Like, he was supposed it, to have a workshop. <laughs> or like a, a, a magic shop. Yeah, like it, that's what it would be in like the Columbo episode where the suspect was a magician. It'd be like, welcome to my loft. Right. Oh, there's my freight elevator and here's my guillotine trick. And like, because a production designer designed my nest, like there's not shit everywhere. <laughs> but the truth is, dirty people. <laughs> dirty people. I, there was a, and, and high suicide rate too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There was a there was a there was a there was a magician that worked at the safe house and we would we, his car was in the parking lot it was very clear he was living in it like 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 and and it was like he still like they wear like three piece suits and like ties but it was like then they get in this like Dennis Woodruff station wagon with a portalette uh, hanging off the back and like a fucking bag of pee on the handle and <sighs> I love how we started off. <laughs> Started off saying, "Hey, we're all equal," <laughs> <laughs> and then by the time we were done, like lousy fucking magicians with their, I just their am, fa- I am fascinated with dirty. people who go into the. It's like it's like in a world where, like, it's like oh, I'm gonna lie to people. Yeah, I don't want to get better at that. I'm not dishonest enough. Yeah, I gotta get real good at what our friend Asperger detective would call redirecting light. Mm. Like I'm going to, I'm going to make you think this handkerchief is floating because God is real. I, I'm not content to just be like, check out the, my fucking thing where I like put these wires and I made this handkerchief again. <laughs> like, I mean, God bless, but God damn. <laughs> 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 that's, that's the title, right? <laughs> that should be the title of the podcast. It, it, God bless. It but. breaks my heart to feel bad for a magician. <laughs> God damn. That's yeah. like when you find out that shit about people at Disney and they're like puking in the heads and there's catacombs underneath where they feel like they have to, they have to, oh, I have to eat this burrito really fast so I can get outside and, and deal, do the business. And you're like, damn, Disney. Yeah. Damn. Or like ba- ballerina's <laughs> feet are all mashed up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, that's worth it. <laughs> Well, it's working, yeah, but I'm saying like, it's, it's sad to find out. You're like, oh, you're so beautiful. You're jumping over the... Yeah, my feet are all purple. Yeah. Sad. Everybody should have to know what every other profession goes through 
just to do the shit. Or you go like, what a beautiful breed of dog. Yeah, well, it, it's bred for fucking, I have to clean its sinuses out with a Q-tip yeah. or it'll die overnight. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, because we, someone in England thought their faces looked adorable <laughs> that way. <laughs> we, uh, That's a mush face dog. It can't really <laughs> breathe on its own. It needs a CPAP machine. Ask me how I got its tail to curl. <laughs> I dare you. <laughs> the hot iron. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it involves thousands and thousands yeah. of years of a hot iron. <laughs> and then dangling it in a well. I mean, that's dogs in general. Like, dogs are, that's the ultimate. Dogs are the ultimate magician or, like, like they're, they're, because they're, they're, they're like, uh, humankind's best friend and they're so emotionally attached to us and they're, like, so, we're like, oh, my God, what a bond we have with you. And then you, like, you open the hood on that and you're like, oh, God, yeah, it's because every single time one of your brothers or sisters disappointed a caveman, they threw him on the fire. Yeah. I, I, and then the ones that were left were allowed to breed and it's just like, now you got all these different shaped fucking things and like, oh, this one's used to clean cannons out and fucking <laughs> Brunswick, like... It's, it was bred for the deformity of its fl- front arms. And it's like, it can't, it, get, it's, it's, uh, it gets more lung cancer than usual, but <laughs> it's true. boy, can it clean out a cannon. <laughs> It'll get those ferrets right out of your bastilles. Right. <laughs> right. And first prize, look at it trot. Like, <laughs> you know, they have special muscles on the inside of their brow that make yeah. them more expressive that wolves don't have. Wolves can only look like they're going to eat you. <laughs> Almost <laughs> identical DNA, but like dogs are just like, they just have a fucking thing. Like, you... It's like a different breed of canine. Since you have said that, when I listen to you talk, I try to not do that. <laughs> <laughs> what? My natural... To look at me like you're going to eat me? I think all people, when somebody's talking to you, they're like, you'll be like, yeah, I went and got some beer. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, what happened? But since you have said that to me, I've been really conscious of like, yeah, then what happened? (laughs) 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 What? uh, You're trying to look like a wolf? (laughs) What? Or are you trying to look like I a dog? I told you, Dan, I don't, I don't always know what's going to happen. <laughs> but <laughs> you're conscious like, of your brown we're now. We're cool. We, we've been cool for like 13 years, but one day I may have to bite you. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I, it's, I, 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 I'm hard pressed to know, like, do I respect wolves more than dogs? Yeah, like, you like Because wolves. wolves are like... There, you know, you said there's a documentary about uh, they compare the two, and then they put the they put the little treat under the cup, and the wolves will just like they know the treats under the cup, and they paw at it, and they're like, I'm a wolf, I get the cup for the fucking, and the and then the dog will try for the cup and it can't, and then it stops and it looks at the nearest person because it's like, Can excuse me, but <laughs> yeah. I did my best, yeah. And it's like, I I don't, are we on the side of that or not? Is it the shadow we cast or is it, it's, it's just crazy. It's like, uh, it's it's such a, it's a strange poetic relationship. It is. It's great that like, uh, we needed something and that something kind of also needed us. It's weird when your like dog walks over to you and puts its head on you because you're like, oh man, we get along and we don't speak the same language. You, You could have left a long time ago. You could have changed your mind and bit my face off a long time ago, and it's dope. It's kind of the it's kind of the coolest thing that man did or woman did for each other thousands of years ago. They're when like, I, in the future, you're gonna need a dog. When I first moved into the new house, uh, there was this moment that I never had with Harvey, where like he it was he didn't really like he's not like this is my house and it's not he for all he knows I'm just like you know their dogs are just like. Bef- I'm sure they get a sense of like sort of like oh this is my new burrow this is my new den but he just like he's like well I'm with you you're my man and I'm your dog and we're here together and I kind of like it just kind of organically happened that he and I like walked the perimeter of my house together and he just like there was no leash or anything and it was just sort of nighttime and he he just like fell into this behavior that was like, and that I fell into too, where I was like, it just felt so right. It felt yeah. like lifting a hammer or a gazelle femur. Like it was like, I'm this <laughs> sentient primate. And it was just had this like 
retriever at my hip yeah. and he just kept perfect pace with me and he kind of like it was as if he understood that what we were doing is we were just sort of checking the perimeter and yeah. he it was a, it, the, the, something just swelled inside me i think it's very notable though that like we, you know it, i think i don't know what the numbers are like let's say 50,000 years of dog domestication versus 10,000 years of cat infestation um and i say that very affectionately as a former cat person i was like i just but cats if you asked them are you domesticated they would say no thank you very much sir uh i am not a domesticated animal i've chosen to live among humans because it profits me and and yeah. And, yeah. and unlike dogs, cats don't, they come in some different shapes and furs and things, but they're basically cats. And yeah. when we go into outer space, we're going to bring dogs and cats. And it, 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 cats didn't kiss as much ass as dogs did. And they're still coming on the ark for sure. Yeah. And I find that kind of interesting because yeah. also what I find interesting, humans love cats as much as they love dogs. We, we, maybe if you could quantify that, that might not be true, but like we, we we will bring the in the way that matters we will bring cats with us to outer space if we survive and, and like like we love cats because they're soft and they they react to us loving them and and they're and like it's almost like dogs didn't have to go as far as they did <laughs> It's almost like we as humans were like, you know what? You could have split the diff and we would have might have respected you more. You could have negged us a little bit. <laughs> and the dogs were like, I figured it out. Whatever you say, boss. And we're like, all right, dial it back. <laughs> this guy catches mice and he purrs. That's it. Like he can shit where he wants. He shits in a box. How's that for fucking like yeah. consideration? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's it's, it's interesting because humans are very self-loathing, which is why we I think we reach out. We it, it, every human, that, every animal that we ever touched, I'm sure we tried to domesticate. We come yeah. across an elephant, we probably were like, "Oh, can you have one as a pet?" And the answer is no, you can't because they're smarter and they have graveyards. I don't know. <laughs> you can't you can't have an elephant as a pet. You can't. Well, what if I, well, what if this elephant I breed it with that elephant? It's going to be still be an elephant. It's going to be mad at you and step on you, um, or it's going to be sad and step on a stool and cry and then die and it'll remember where it died and every, every all the other elephants will go and a scientist will go. They're all sad and we'll all cry. <laughs> Not a pet, not a pet. You can't, can't, you know, we try ferrets, we try lizards, you know. Yeah, with like, the bite. Eh, everybody needs a bite. carny in their life. But um, it, 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 we, we, it's because we, we hate ourselves. Like, you know, we're, we're not, we're not, what other animal species is like so insecure that they're like, anybody else want to party? Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Like, you're it's either crazy. eating some shit or it's, it's eating you. That's the general rule in the animal kingdom. Yeah. There's some ants that milk some aphids. I get you. And there's capybaras. I'm capybaras picking up like, what you're laying down. There's some, there's some crocodile yeah. birds eating right. out the teeth. Right. I got you, player. <laughs> <laughs> That's the interspecies opening line. <laughs> Are some, you a shark? I see you shark out there. Some shark general Michigan okay. going on between a couple species. Oh, this spider lays an egg, and the egg looks like a fruit, and the right. fruit like makes a right. pollen or whatever. But uh, you know, like only us are like, who wants to party? Yeah, I'm so alone. Yeah. Wilson. Well, uh, we share food. Yeah, we fucking will give up food. Yeah, that's like, a big fucking deal to animals. But then only dogs are like. Oh, shit, that's a human baby. Uh, however, actually, oh, shit, this is a thing I could have written down. Okay, so... <laughs> it, it, damn, we filled some time. It, in my new house, um, there, there is this species of bird... Oh. Um, very interesting. Like, there's a couple of neighborhood cats, and uh, there's also this, like, weird species of bird that I, I don't see a lot. They have, like, very long tails. They kind of look like... Uh, sorry, what? <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> I, I, okay, I love three things about that. I love that you're British. Um, I love that you... <laughs> and I was like, in the place I moved, there's these birds with long tails. Peacock. Right. And then, right. And, then, and then I was like, sorry, what? And you're like, 
Sorry, Peacock. <laughs> yeah, you can see him doing it. Like, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I just, I hit the buzzer too early. <laughs> yeah. you, you probably didn't move <laughs> to a zoo. Yeah. Where I used to live, there was peacocks in like the hills, like ranch property, and I'd drive down there just to see them. Like they'd jump up on a house and be like, like "Holy yeah. shit!" Like, wait, well, like Simi Valley? Yeah, and Simi Valley. Oh, okay. In the hills. So I, I apologize, sir. Uh, uh, that, 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 then, so it's not a crazy thing to be like peacock. Well, to me, it indicated he thought you moved somewhere really rich. Yeah. Okay. Like a really rural, like like out in the outskirts, like Shadow Hills, and there's peacocks out there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Maybe. Sorry, sir. Maybe I don't know. I didn't I mean to mock like... you. I mean, I meant to mock you, funny. but I didn't have all the information I needed to mock you and shouldn't have mocked you. That's what I mean. The delivery did deserve mockery. No, it was fun. <laughs> it was funny. In my mind, peacocks are like, are like tigers. Like they only right. exist in like Other a, a zoo stuff. or a foreign land. Yeah. yeah. That's my own ignorance, apparently. <laughs> they're all, they're all peacock, like you think I'm like Aquaman or something. Like, like oh, he must have moved <laughs> to the sea. <laughs> like Xanadu. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. Matt's a ray. No, they're like regular <laughs> looking birds that float or fly around, float, float, flappy, flappy float or what fly. What do they look, what colors are they? I'm, uh, they just like, they like bird color, but like you know, they. Blue and purple, <laughs> green. They just have, they just have, they're just characterized by like, they have slightly longer tail feathers than, but like, picture like a sparrow, but then take its tail feathers and like make them like uh, the length of an extra sparrow on the it's end. A, it's like a. Yeah. So it's just like it's just a like grackle. what is that like a little baby road runner like not the, a like a cartoon style but like anyways but th- th- they're all over my house and they're very like they 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 um god damn like they um th- so there's these neighborhood cats and like if the cat comes in my yard um I'm like oh cute kitty, kitty we got a little neighborhood cat maybe I'll give it a bowl of milk uh, <laughs> <laughs> one day. <laughs> It's like UNICEF. Like, oh, maybe if they catch me at the right time, I'll uh, give them a, f- f- a Heathcliff fish bone. Um, but no sooner than I'm thinking that, and these fucking things dive bomb this cat. Good. And the birds are, those birds are everywhere, all over my yard. They don't fuck with humans. They're yeah. constantly like fly. they'll fly low. They're not like, they don't, I've never felt threatened by them. I've been impressed by their, <laughs> um, their kind of like, I don't know what you'd call it. Like their airspace is very Top Gun. Like, yeah. like, oh, hello, sailor. Um, like, like they're you used sa- a sailor sailor sailors don't yeah. fly planes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if they did, but Marines don't swim as much as the Navy. It's true. So fuck you for thinking I'm. <laughs> hey, look, there's room for confusion America. among the armed forces. There could be sailors that fly. You don't know. <laughs> There are. There are. They're, they're, they're battleships yeah. and they go up in planes. That's right. They're out in boats. You got to be true. in the Navy to fly some of those planes. That's right. You're in the Air Force still, but you're also <laughs> a sailor <laughs> on the Navy. Thank you. And yes. fuck everyone. Boat. Especially you, Peacock Man. <laughs> How dare you think I had peacocks? Hey, uh, Sorry. Hey, Dan. Dan. <sighs> hey, <laughs> yeah, yes. Yes, British fan. Peacock. <laughs> Uh, anyways, it's I, I just find that remarkable because I was thinking about it, I'm like these fucking things. Okay, I know they're they're this cat wasn't doing anything. It was definitely not like looking to rumble. It was like sunning itself, and these birds start one and then two started going, zoom, and they were like fuck. The cat was like fuck you. Like it, it yeah. was not. It, it it was like leave me alone. I'll move then. And then the birds were like, I said fuck you and the cat was like fuck man yeah and i was like why i was like holy shit i've never seen this these birds are warring on this cat like honey come look at this and it was like moving from window to window i was like what holy shit they won't leave this fucker alone he's like running he's like at this point he is now definitely the victim like if he wasn't before it was like he's just like i'm a i'm only born a cat like i've done nothing to any of you and they were just like fuck you don't like the shape of your body and <laughs> And I just thought that was crazy because, and I was thought about it, I was like, but they never fuck with me. Though I, I recognize that bird. They don't do that to me. I'm in the backyard in my pool or I'm running around. Like, they've obviously, they've got some instinct to protect their nest or their grounds. 400 birds a year. One cat. 
It, they spread out, and they'll kill fucking four houses full, like in that region. Four you mean the cat, cats are that? Cats, cats are, are the efficient. shark of the yeah. birdosphere. And yeah. Whereas humans are not. And yeah. in fact, to the contrary, they it's like this species of no species of bird that lives in a city would survive if their behavior included ever fucking with a guy mowing his lawn. Yeah. Because you would immediately go, that there's a vampire bird. Oh, was that? <laughs> like, like open season. Like, like, you hear them head peckers are back again. And, like they'd be extinct immediately. They are. They are. I, I mean, mean they, they, they don't live to tell the tale. There's no right. such thing as that species. I just found that kind of fascinating, that, 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 that key and tumbler mechanism. But also, did you know crows are, uh, did you hear that episode of that uh, G show? Oh yeah, all about crows. Now you know you know you know about the the I, they drop the nuts in the street and they you know we we've all heard that one that old trope. They drop pennies on the train tracks, but they like recognize faces. <laughs> they say about mm-hmm. crows. They yeah, recognize for human years. faces. Yeah, I bet they do. That's why don't be mean to crows. They'll they'll like they'll like they'll like they'll they 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 they're they're they're. they're, they're higher tech like they're they, it's not good enough for a crow to just be either scared of humans or uh, uh have an affinity toward them i thought we were gonna die no we're good <laughs> earlier <laughs> about that's 20 minutes die. ago oh, that's how we die about 20 minutes ago through the crack in that curtain i saw steve levy just standing there cracking yeah. his knuckles <laughs> <laughs> so piano like, what wire the fuck? right so it made me reach for my phone. I was like, what is going um, on? Back but I think it's like, it's, like, it's like, oh, that is like, like a species of bird that we deem as ugly and kind of like parasitic or in, in what would you call it? Infestuous. Is that a word? Like, like we don't look at, I we like look at it. crows as being like, they don't, they don't deserve the, the avian title. They're like varmints, you know, but precisely because of that, probably they have developed like a keener, relationship with their human uh, colleagues because yeah. they're like it doesn't pay to be a crow and look at all humans as one thing or another it it definitely you reproduce more as a crow if you can tell the difference between the little girl that brings you uh, right. uh, worms <laughs> and uh, the cranky old man that has a BB gun and yeah. it's like the only the DNA passed for it, it's like so you have this like super intelligence uh, among this like mangy bird I fucking I mean, love crows yeah that's the thing people people love crows people feel like crows are super smart some people don't like the crows but crows are like upper middle class <laughs> in the bird situation <laughs> so like they're sitting pretty because they, they can take on like a hawk like they will fuck a hawk up a group of them but they also kind of like we'll eat an egg out of a sparrow's nest. So like, and sparrows can't really, no matter how many sparrows get together, they can't really take on a, a, a crow. So it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a tense. And they have funerals, apparently. Yeah. If a crow is dead, the other crows will gather around and they'll observe the dead crow. But it's not just out of like some elephant-like nostalgia. They don't all be sad. <laughs> Fucking... <laughs> To idiot bleeding heart elephants. Oh, an elephant died. I'm so sad. Let's have a wake. The crows are apparently like gathered around the dead crow for yeah. a real practical purpose. They're like appraising what happened to this dead crow. It's really more of an autopsy. It's an autopsy. <laughs> it's a, it, yeah, everyone that dies should have in a proper society an autopsy. Socialized autopsies. <laughs> yeah, no. I thought it, that was interesting. I don't know. Crows are just. I, I wish crows would be my friends. Does that make sense? You could train a crow if you got a baby crow. It, it, you know, you could I, you could take it up off the streets. Yeah, they actually are. I mean, no one wants to be like a bird pet owner, but like crows are especially pretty uh, bad to keep as pets. Apparently, I mean, oh. just just they're messy, but they they are smart. Like they'll yeah. they'll be good. But I just anytime I see a crow, I just like I wish I could just like say to that crow like, hey hey man. <laughs> you need some like water or something. I bought a frisbee and a bottle of water to keep in my car. So if I see a hot crow, I could put out like a bird bath of water. A, a hot crow? Yeah. You like, know, oh, you, you mean like a, a, a sexy crow <laughs> <laughs> wearing like fishnets? Um, no, but uh, give me a beat. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. I'll take a beat. <laughs> you working? <laughs> but when uh, when it gets hot, you know, they kind of open their mouth and they look like they're panting or whatever. And it seems really uncomfortable. It's like, man, that sucks. I also went to the store um, to try and buy uh, crow feed. 
But crows don't really eat feed. Um, so I don't know. I, I guess I'm going to get stale french fries. Crows will love stale french fries if you didn't <laughs> They'll know eat that. fucking anything. You, you get dead squirrel, dead right. possum. They, they do kind of anything. like, I mean, That's why they don't if eat you feed. live in the city yeah. and you got crows in your backyard, they can be super fucking annoying. Oh, I mean, they're, they're loud. That, they're, 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 they're that loud. is not a pretty, they're, they're, they're the German of <laughs> bird language. <laughs> Like, like it's, that is that is not a uh, a a call designed to seduce anyone. <laughs> it seduces me. Are you telling me that? <laughs> it's defined, and they do the thing that coyotes do, which is one crow will make a bunch of noise to make other crows that it doesn't even know to fuck your shit up. But just they to do, do it as a gang. Their, their call is a little more intricate, and that's probably why it sounds a little uglier to us because it's yeah. more function over form, yeah. like German. <laughs> uh, Strumpfen hosen friggin friggin. Um, uh, the the I just said pantyhose in German. That's the only word I know. <laughs> it's a big internet. Um, I can say pantyhose in a lot of different languages. That's what you learned at the magician's house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, also that they uh, they mimic other birds. Like yeah. they're just not famous for it the way parrots are. Uh, that they can they can choose to sound like other birds. They just. No one pays they, them for they it. Just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're like, yeah, those shit gig. I'm not gonna. I'm not your fucking uh, rich it. little. God damn it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a Branson, Missouri <laughs> right. bird. I'm not gonna fucking like play a fiddle for you and fucking wear rhinestones. I'm fucking. Uh, I'm on the streets, bitch. <laughs> Peacock. <laughs> no peacock. At least I moved this place because these birds were locked up. Peacock. <laughs> Sorry, what, sir? I'm sorry. Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. I love just enough booze guy is that guy. It's like, <laughs> Don't peacocks sound like cats? Don't peacocks go like, meh? Yeah, kind of. It's a really bad sound. Yeah. yeah. It's awful. Yeah, I bet meh. I <laughs> Brendan's recoiling visibly. <laughs> Did, can you imagine if that cat was fucking being chased by two things making the same noise it makes? <laughs> Bunch of peacocks fucking. What if two peacocks were chasing a cat and two of those long-tailed birds that aren't peacocks were like in the neighborhood? They're like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they sound like. <laughs> On Fox. Uh, <laughs> did you know that whales, Brandon? Uh <laughs> That they might be able to communicate their feelings with their echolocation, and that that human observers detect pods of whales with a couple of sick whales in it, and the, the it, we 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 suspect it's possible that the the whale song in a pod of whales it, it, that they're so their song so affects each other that if there's a couple of sick whales in a pod, that their whole song becomes "We are sick." You so they sort of tease the sick whale. <laughs> we are sick. sick. Oh, we are sick. We are sick. And they really feel it too. They feel the really. So you're cool. saying <laughs> they're, yeah, they're just trying are to get, like, get rid of the sick whales? <laughs> Ooh, I'm sick too. Look at me, I'm sick. <laughs> I'm just going to go beach myself. <laughs> oh, I'm going to beach myself, too. <laughs> See you later, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an equally valid explanation of that phenomenon. We just wouldn't know. We wouldn't assume that they were like us. Yeah. We listened to, me and Dan listened to this podcast on Radio Lab. It was a contest about animal intelligences. And the slime mold one, which is bullshit. What? They're not smart. They're just efficient. Like a robot's not smart. That's well, how it was they just, judged it. Well, it's it? kind of dumb. It's like, like, yeah, like what's your... I mean, that's the question they asked in the beginning. Like, how would you measure animal intelligence? Yeah. Would you measure it if a dog... Like Robert Krolwich said, he used the example of like a snow fox being able to detect a mouse and dive down. Which to me is not intelligence. It's like, yeah, well, we define intelligence by like... Yeah, that's, but that, that kind of raises that question. It's like, well, what are we doing that's so goddamn smart? Math. Cities. There you go. Yeah, but we're... <laughs> Two we're, answers are, right off but, the but, bat. But are, 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 aren't we doing those things by instinct? And also, which one of us can do those things? Like, we're not... We're just, I we just do, do those things. I can do our, cities. <laughs> 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 I 
I love that we said it like two, two rejects during the apocalypse. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I can do math, so <laughs> don't kill me and my boy here. He eats cities. He does cities. <laughs> we should get extra crackers. <laughs> <laughs> we should get access to water because my boy here do cities. <laughs> you guys are like of mice and men. You're like traveling. You're like this building should be eleven buildings high, which means seven buildings high plus two buildings high. <laughs> and then no one can question you because you're like I invented math. <laughs> <laughs> no one else has math. Everyone's like, ooga booga. <laughs> Sounds like that's what 11 is. <laughs> okay. So I'm not very good at it, but we're still rich. I off guess of he's it. the Gary Excellent. Sinise. Of <laughs> <laughs> that episode was weird. They were like, it was a live event, and so people were leaning really hard into trying to perform and not like pleading their case, but I found it pretty unsatisfying as a result, you know? I thought it was an interesting blend of that it was and, a fair, yeah. and it's some information. I don't know. You got like, information. Like, you judge an animal's intelligence by its ability to unscrew a lid. Yeah. See, exactly. That's what I mean. It's like an yeah. octopus can fucking get exactly. in a thing and then put it over itself. Like, that's smart. Like, right. uh, but the, the whale lady was like, oh, it might be the case that whales feel feelings because when they echolocate to communicate with each other, it actually hits them in the face. And so it's a physical sensation that they're feeling. And so it's like if you're actually punched in the face by sadness rather than just receiving sadness. And I'm like, that's not, that's not putting yourself into a cup. You know, that's not learning to read a book like an right. octopus does. I mean, a motherfucking chicken can beat you a tic-tac-toe. That, they talked about that. They talked about that. Holy no, no, no. shit. It's not Do true. Not, don't. It's not don't. true. Don't. Sorry. Dude, don't. Fuck. <laughs> don't. <laughs> this is my dad's stuff. Chickens are actually the dumbest animal in the world. What? That chicken beat me. It beat me dead. <laughs> I mean, that guy was kind of funny, right? Because he brought the chickens out and he was kind of subverting the whole thing. Well, yeah. See, to me, it's like this a, they say, oh, we're going to do a contest about uh, animal intelligence. And here's four people that are going to do three minutes of weird stand up. Like, it's like, well, let's talk about we could do. There's probably room for both. But yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I think I'm just 46 and I'm like now I'm like. I like NPR, and you're like, God damn it, <laughs> the world's on fire. And I'm it like, really is. Calm down, Sonny. Isn't it? It's mm-hmm. fucking on Let's fire. Just listen to the big band music on the NPR. They got Tommy Dorsey blowing bubbles. <laughs> they don't want to say Nazi too many times in an hour. That would upset the old bones. Yeah, I, I think I just specifically have a vendetta against like that Radio Lab style of humor. I don't know. Something about it really grates, grates me. Did you ever hear the Radio Lab where they fucking like where Krolwich accidentally fucking catastrophically triggered like this like indigenous dude who was like, like, like they, oh, that pissed me off. But they, but I was like, yeah, OK, so there was a let's talk about there's a guy who was talking about how in his village or city or whatever, there was this. Uh, a, a phenomenon that he almost uh, invested with supernatural weight to it because it's like this, what is it, like yellow uh, detritus or yellow dust kind of came down or something. Some color of dust descended and they like thought it was like, it was like a myth or like it was like a secret alien, not alien, but they're like, oh, it's like the government or it's like aliens or ghosts or something. And then he's like, you know, that was like America doing weird experiments. And he got like really mad, right? Was that you're talking about? Yeah. But are you sure that specifically was the paradigm? Because I thought I remembered it as like they were convinced it was government experiments. But right. The truth that, is that's it was, it was like fungus or something. Yeah. And so then they got really offended at the idea. And then they were like, yeah, well, we've struggled so hard and it's been so hard and you just don't understand that. But it's right. like, no, you don't understand. You just, the government sucks. And also this was just moss. Like, I'm sorry. The government still sucks. I'm not saying they're great. Yeah, no, it was just crazy. I was, it was crazy to listen yeah. to. It it was so basically crazy. what he was saying was our people have suffered from this, this incredible dust that the United States put on us. And these guys were like debunkers who were like, hey, that was just pollen. Yeah, was, something yeah, like that. It was that. sort and of this like, this is, like, this is actually just fungus. You don't know yes, what we've been through. Yes, you, your, your people have been the victim of like exploitation or whatever, development or whatever. But this yellow shit that comes down is actually just a natural thing. And the it was... It was like it was act. It was it was 
it was magnified by the fact that there was like a young woman that was translating for like this elder right. who was like just speaking in his native language and she was translating for him. And it was just, it was crazy it to was hear. Intense. Like it was really, I mean, it was one of those things where it was like, I was really glad I heard it because it was so like, it was like, Part train wreck, but there was something healthy about it. I don't know. It was like because it was it was NPR guys that were just like, oh, by the way, we do a science show on NPR, and this is just shit falling down. And then the guys like, like I don't want to do an impression of fucking indigenous language. <laughs> no, no, do it. Like, but if you yeah. did, no, no, it's, 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 go a little something. He said, I don't know, I don't know. So he's like, he's speaking indigenous language, and she's translating, and it's like, but you can hear his timber changing. And then she's translating and she's going like, but you don't understand. The thing is, is this. And then Kroll, which is like, yeah, but uh, it, it, it was just like the fungus. And, and then he's like, oh, I don't know. Like, he's like his, his excitation level starts going up. So you can't understand what he's saying, but she's matching his level and she's translating for him in real time. And she's in tears. Yeah. She starts going like, but but you don't understand like 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 how can you do this to us? How can you after everything you've done and then you bring us in here and the whole time you hear him underneath saying things you don't understand and but it's mounting and mounting and he's he he's the baseline and she's yeah. the treble and they're both going up and up and up and Robert Kroll, which doesn't strike me as a guy who's ever been in the business of confrontation. <laughs> and so he's just like, whoops. And, uh, <laughs> and then Jad Abenrod's like, well, maybe there's a way to, huh? <laughs> and it, was, it was fucking, cr but it was I, just like deep respect that they aired it, that they fucking, that they, that they go like, here's a crazy fucking thing we got into. Yeah. Um, where, which is like, well, we didn't mean to offend, but it was like, no heroes, no villains. Just like a crazy four-way intersection of culture, humanity. Like, like, like. I, I don't know. It was. It was. It was. I mean, one thing's for sure. You get hypnotized driving to work. You're listening to Radio Lab, and then all of a sudden, some shit like that goes down, and you're like, "Whoa, goddamn! Do I need to pull my car over? <laughs> Should I call in late to work? Like, do, do I need to drive over to NPR? Do they need help? <laughs> <laughs> do they need help? <laughs> it was a driveway moment. And I do respect that because I like I did whiting wongs with Jessica and like you know we would there was more than a couple times where it was like shit would hit the fan and like I would sound like a fucking pompous ass and like I I you know we'd step out of the booth and go like whew that was visceral and then you go like then the engineer would be like you want me to edit anything out I'm like no because you can't like don't yeah like 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 let's what are we doing this for then that was that would be fucking dumb like 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 okay so i threw a tantrum and like 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 air it you know like gotta do it gotta do it yeah. put it in the shadow box otherwise otherwise you can't, you can't pay yourself to like fucking talk into a microphone i it, it yeah so i i do respect it that they're like they got caught in that fucking sand trap and they were like oof this is uncomfortable this isn't an easy. it's also faster if you double down in a way that's like Oh man, I was also shocked by the things that came out of my mouth. Versus this, like, what we do is we kind of run. And I think now, if you can get there faster than your critics and go, shit, I was trying. I said some shit. I fucked up. Um, and you would have too if you'd been talking for 48 minutes straight. Because we all would. Like, I think after we all got about 15 minutes worth of charm in us. <laughs> <laughs> Which then in, in like 30 minutes, you start being like, yeah, and my dad was just, you know, he just drank too much. I don't know. I mean, anyway, I'm glad we're here. Let's cut the cake. Uh, <laughs> but it just brings me back to that thing I, that I talked with Duncan babbling endlessly about, but it was like, it had to do with that free will thing because it's like, it is weird how our culture, and by our culture, I genuinely mean like, I think basically the entire human species culture, like we seem to have it in for ourselves and that we do not want um, to reward the changing of the mind. We have an inherent suspicion, sure. and, and probably for a pretty good reason, because there's this thing called sociopaths that, that like, if, you, if there's absolutely, if you hold nothing sacred and you can just feel however, or express whatever you need to express to get through whatever gates you need to get through. You're a genuine danger to the rest of society. We are held in place by the fact that 
hey, I choose not to be a criminal today. It's not because there's a cop watching me every second. It's right. it's it's like I there I might not encounter a cop the entire day and still obey the law. Why? <laughs> because I have decided that I am a law-abiding citizen. How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brandon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now a man don't move to the... Um, the, the it, 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 but it's, it, is, it is weird how much we punish uh, uh, the changing of the mind. Like, yeah. that, 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 that we're like, oh, I don't trust you now because you said you felt a different way yesterday. Yeah. And the weird thing about that is that uh, we are, all you have outside of the changing, the changing is the only thing, like whether we say free will is an illusion or not, it, it, it's still arguably that that's all there is to who you really are. Everything else is shit outside your control, even within a model where you have no control over your choices. It's like this how you Rio react. stat over here is still arguably the only thing worth paying attention yeah, to. Yeah, that yeah. This moved today to yesterday like all this other shit is like well this guy woke up on monday and he said i'm proud to be white and he spent 70 years saying that it's like well that's obviously worth nothing because it never changed yeah. and and so like and, and we but we punish the change it, we we kind, yeah. we we kind of like we regard it we want it to happen a little bit, but we don't want to, uh, you know, uh, David Bowie did it enough, uh, but uh, don't do it too much because right. you don't want to be a Kardashian. And, you know, yeah, I don't want to, don't be empty. Don't don't reveal yourself to be virtue signaling, which means that you only, uh, you just do whatever you go where the, where the wind blows. And like, we just have all these opinions about when you're allowed to change your mind and what, 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 what basis you're using to change how you think. And yet that's all you possibly could be in throughout your life is like how you change. Uh, I, want, I want my money back <laughs> from being a human. I mean, I wish I could be a raccoon. I, I was they like, they, they got it made. Raccoons don't, they, they're, 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 there's no raccoons out there rumbling each other like, hey man, you, you ate a different kind of garbage yesterday. But they do sniff each other's butt for that reason. You, so the there garbage. is there is some evolutionary shit to change. You told me all about the butt sniffing. Yeah, with the dogs. I know. I know. He's but got a whole what, thing about the butt sniffing. It's, it's a. It's the. Go it's, off, it's, King. It's, it's you, <laughs> go, go, go. That's is that the, a thing, or did you? Most hilarious. Oh, I invented moment. that. I'm a genius. <laughs> go off. No, King. no, that's a thing. Yeah, that's, that's the that's counter to Yes Queen. That's the salt less, to Yes yeah. Queen's pepper. Fucking what you I want to hear about Go this. off, King. I Spill the hear about tea, the Uncle. The, or the dog butts. <laughs> spill the, spill the uh, power aid. No, what's this spit about that, dogs? Spit that gospel, priest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that they use it to figure out what the other dog has been eating, where it's been going, what it's been fucking around with. That they sort of use it like a, uh, uh, like it's a cheap GPS. Because your butthole, <laughs> your butthole holds all of the information about where you've been. The poop, the poop. It's their wallet. It's their, it's their, it's the shoes they're wearing. It's like a dog, a dog from uptown is going to have a totally different asshole smell yeah. than a dog from downtown. And, and the it, dog from uptown is right. like, God damn, you got a high protein diet. That's right. And like wol wolves are like, oh shit, there's a lot of protein in your asshole. You're not, you're not eating a bunch of grass. You're not a sick wolf. You've been, you're, you're downing a lot of mammoth or pigs right. or, um, I'm going to roll with you. Because you've got protein to spew, like like people who hunt with you end up with protein. Yeah, yeah, it's that's a fucked up skill. And you thought that was a little disappointing because you're like, they're capitalists, <laughs> you know, they're that they're that they're not, you know, that they're. But I thought it was a little actually uplifting. <laughs> I want to go back to the choice thing though because it's super interesting. Is that you can buy certain cars, you can buy eight colors, but on high end cars you can get forty colors, right? So I think. I think choice is, is a huge thing that gets used against us and that ec the execution of choice is offensive to people that they're like, who do you think you are to make that choice? It's really what we're all fighting to do is get to a position where we can choose every hour of the day. But there's a big scam going on, right? Like, like the man is laughing all the way to the bank. Yeah. If poor people and, and like, like it, the less we change our minds... Well, they uh, like to keep you in a box so you can't, 
Right. Right. Because because who wants a bunch of poor people like waking up every day and right. checking, taking inventory and going like, how do I feel? I don't know. I'm going to make right. a new decision today. Is it Taco Tuesday? No. Fuck you. It's not even Tuesday. Oh shit! I whoa. Yeah. Like and so there's a and I don't mean like America, Area 51, Washington. I like in general society. And by the way, we live in one. What? Um, we live in a society. Uh, the 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 like that is the scam. That's yeah. the big con. Is like. Don't fucking tell me you feel differently today. Don't come at me talking about like you were you felt one way today and you felt that's women talk. Like yeah. we feminize that. We we say, oh, women are intuitive, they were mercurial, like we and we tell them at the same time, you're weak. That's why you can't uh, be in charge of shit because you'll change your mind too yeah. much. When women go shopping, it takes forever. Uh, when a man goes into a store, he just pulls something off the shelf. I'm on to the Hell. game. That's how we shame you. The you man. Know? If the man is listening, I'm on to your shit. Yeah. I'm going to change my mind every fucking day. Yeah. It's goddamn I'm going right. to be the fucking kiss of minds. Yeah. Well, they kind of stuck well. to the same thing, basically. <laughs> God, I'm going to be the David Bowie of minds, no, but no. like f- faster, though. I'm not going to like to take seven years and then be like, look at now I'm into suits. I'm gonna I'm gonna be the RuPaul of minds. You're but, gonna be the remember you're gonna be the Christy Brinkley Billy Joel. I'm gonna be the Christy Brinkley yeah. of no minds. Person, Not really the that. early Irish angry Jewish Billy Joel. I'm gonna Joel. be like a, a, fa- a fast forward Billy Joel where yeah. I'm like <laughs> surprise I'm not I'm not like I'm not gonna hit you for talking last night at the party now I love you and I'm keeping the faith. Like, but like, yes. I'm not going to take four years to get there. I'm going to be like, I'm going to punch you. I love you. I'm a drone. <laughs> I, 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 we, we, you, you were talking about that last night. Billy Joel, like uh, he, he betted Christy Brinkley and then he became, <laughs> He was like, he, he was so He like, started off like, I'm an angry man. I'm an Irish man, Jewish, but Irish singing man. And then he got a little. Last cre- night at the party, <laughs> you started lipping off. You had to be a fucking bitch, didn't you? Oh, but you didn't know this morning I pay the rent. Uh, and, and, then, and then it was like, up. Oh, Town girl, <laughs> she's got pussy that I've never had. I think I'm gonna give her pussy a whirl. I've got, I'm, I'm afraid to look around <laughs> the world. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and, then, and then every album, I was like, cooling in my pockets and a heap of the Pepsi. Doop a doop a doop. Because <laughs> like, the good the old days weren't high. always good, and tomorrow's not as bad as it seems. <laughs> right. like, like that, that's fucking liberal talk. Like, he was he was all the way mega. Like, what happened to the fucking student bankers? Are you fucking Chinese? Right, <laughs> right. I got a problem with you, and I don't mind playing the piano with my foot. I'm racist. I'm putting grease in my hair, and if you got a problem, you can take it up with my dick ball. <laughs> Cut yeah. to do I do I oh yo I want some grease in my hair or maybe I don't I love Wheaties <laughs> and then it all culminates and we didn't start the fire he's just right. like no burning bras full of mine everybody remembers all the burger wars and Pepsi Coke and like he's just hanging out talking about he's like Gandalf she's now she's great so great everything so great got that pussy so great Christy Brickley so great ex-wife first wife look at Christy Brickley now she's my wife 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 <laughs> I did get divorced, but I married Christy Brinkley, so you can all blow me. <laughs> By the time she left me, my dick didn't work anymore. I still win. Uh, I'm going to be on American Idol because I wrote 900 songs. Well, we didn't. We can't top that, but we blew it. We could have ended what? on a high. So... I, I mean, have you seen these videos of Billy Joel just like losing it and like throwing shit and kicking stuff? Was that in like his just earlier at days? King or? No, no, on stage. Like he has these, on, he's had these on stage tantrums where he like, what? So you've seen him. Does he, I think he like puts his foot through someone's drum and. Yeah, he got really mad at like a sound check and was like, fuck this. But he was on stage. Well, he, but if somebody brings a drum his, to a concert, he knows his, his band. Oh, I his band. Okay. And I think. <laughs> I would be like, if somebody had a microphone here, I'd be like, give me that. 
Stop that. Peacock, peacock. Give me, stop that. That would be you, so but you, crazy. You, you, you can't be that amplified. I want to see someone bring it like... <laughs> Spring a drum uh, into a concert. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> First row. I got a pocket full of boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Grip tonight. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> spin, spin doctors are like, <laughs> Chicago, we're famous for our <laughs> camaraderie, but buddy, come on. Would you? Boop, 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 <laughs> boop, 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 You just got the major at hat. Song. <laughs> <laughs> it says spin doctors on it. You're kind of like, <laughs> boom, 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 yeah, boom. Next time I go to a concert, I'm going to get the first row and bring a harmonica. <laughs> 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 and I don't give a fuck who's on stage. Like, oh, look, it's Tyrese Gibson from the Fast and the Furious movies. So we all have YouTube to, to, to we can you, you, YouTube Billy Joel. D- oh, yeah, drum please do. I mean, down. Yeah, I wish he, we could uh, just put it up on the screen. It's, he throws it's, his piano, doesn't he? Throws he does, his keyboard. It, I just, I can't think of what, what the, the actual move is, but to me, it was like just, just incredibly violent. Like he yeah. didn't hit someone, but like everything he was doing to me just, just smacked of violence. And I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It punched a violence. <laughs> Uh, Let there be no mistaking where we're going. Yeah, it was a wild. Smack to violence. <laughs> the one thing that sticks in my head about, about Billy Joel is that it supposedly, maybe it's apocryphal, I don't know, but supposedly he's the one guy that never gave uh, uh, Weird Al permission to parody him. Or, or like, boo, he didn't, he didn't, at like, that tracks. Like, Weird Al did that song, It's All Billy Joel to Me. And, oh, the, wow. and Billy Joel was like, historically, it was like, thumbs that? down. I don't like it. Whereas Madonna's like, yeah, like a surgeon. Yeah. I mean, I think like a virgin's a little edgier, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what you're parodying at this point. You're kind of taking the edge off of my work. Uh, seems non-satirical. Like a surgeon. So Billy Joel, come on, man. You're ripe for it. Uh, you're ripe for ridicule. But it's, he didn't want it. He didn't, I, don't, I don't cotton to that. Yeah, don't weird, you weirdify me. I'm not weird. <laughs> so uh, you're weird. <laughs> made that made that weird owl bootleg. <laughs> oh, Billy Joel. <laughs> Don't you try to make my songs any weirder. I'm going to put some grease in a Cracker Jack and put a Studebaker on my shoe. We should just do the lamest version. Just change up down to downtown. Downtown, just to piss him off. girl. <laughs> You've been putting out a Cracker Jack world. Got a guitar and a six string hair. I got the palm meat on the back street stair. I've got Care Bears. And when she comes with my grease, I got cats and dogs. And when she sneezes, I collect her snot on a Lincoln log. She'll see I'm not so tough, just a box of snuff. I'm a dandruff and a top, top gun. (laughs) (laughs) That top gun made it in. I like that. (laughs) We're going to end the show. The audience is like, 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 okay, we'll clap for it. it, it, You end it. I got work. I got work. It's like, it's, it's, uh, it's the end of the show. You got, all right, everybody. Thank the Brandon Johnson, the comptroller for tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, that has been Harmontown at the lovely downtown Dynasty Theater. Please make some noise for Dan Harmon. Spencer Crittenden. 30 to 50 Feral Hogs. Zach McKeever. Nolan Fabricas. Sarah Hill. Steve Levy. Oh, shit. Spencer Crittenden. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Music. (laughs) Good night. Be safe. Did you get any of that? It's a good show.